what's up guys and welcome back to the channel in this video I'm going to show you guys step by step how I built this gorgeous PC this is everything that will be going into this PC build so without further ado let's get straight into the build for our M2 drives you have a screw here that I've already removed and then you have another one here just undo all these screws because we do have a slot under here too we are not going to be using this slot because we have heat sink and thermal pads under these so we might as well use them so we take this off set it aside and this one also once you've loosened the screws there's going to be a protective sticker covering this pad here make sure you remove that we have a one terabyte, so we're going to install this in the top slot for our boot drive. We have a slot here and a slot there. You line that up and you install it on an angle slightly, just like that. And you push it in, press down, and then lock it in with this little quick release latch. Do the same with the bottom one. Line up your notch here with your tab there. Install slightly just on an angle like so and push it in, press down and then with the SSD drives installed, we can now install our heatsink cover back on. And we'll line up this side as well. Underneath your M2, you're going to see this protective sticker. Wherever you install your M2 SSD, remove your sticker from that pad. We're not removing this because we're not installing one here, but you could always install another one here later on. Line up our screw holes with the screw holes here, just so it's nice and snug. Now our motherboard is ready to be installed into the case. I did install the bracket for the AIO that we're using. All I did was push it on through here, and then on the other side, you will see the four mounting screws, and then you just screw in the mounting screws you need in order to mount your pump. As you can see here, I've already pushed all the cables where they needed to go. That's done already because at the back, you can see that there's this other fan right there. You have two sets of ATX mounting holes. You're able to use a secondary exhaust fan to help cool your GPU by exhausting the hot air away from it. You can see there are two arrows here. One points down and one points up. If you do want to use your secondary fan like this, you need to ensure that your motherboard PCIe x16 slot is at the highest point of your rear slots. If it's in the standard position, which is in where the arrow is pointing down, the display ports will be obstructed by the fan. That's why you decide first and foremost whether or not you're going to use the secondary fan. And if you are, move all your motherboard stands to the higher point with the arrow pointing up. Only then will you successfully be able to install your secondary fan without obstructing your display ports. In order to finish this transition of moving the motherboard up higher by one more mount, you need to also change your rear I.O. shield slot because you see this panel at the top right here. How is your motherboard going to sit in if you have this panel here? That does not make sense. Lucky enough, Lee and Lee have also designed this in a modular way where you can remove your rear fan. I've already removed the four screws. You will notice these two screws here, one right there and another one here. And then you also notice there's a hole here. There's also another hole. You see this one right here at the very bottom. You put your screwdriver in and you remove these two screws. It is loose right now, but on the other side, there are also two other screws that you need to remove inside here there's one you can see it's already removed and then you go down lower right here also contains another screw that's already been removed with those screws removed what you want to do now is go ahead and pull out a little lift slide it out just like this this is what it looked like installed notice this panel here that's what's going to stop your io shield sitting in correctly and your motherboard lining up with it so all we need to do is Flip it upside down and reinstall it. Now we have the clearance for the top of your IO shield. Simply put it back in like so. Come in on an angle, come in high up, push it in, just like that. And then reinstall all four of your screws. This is how you would have removed it as well, same way. Same for the bottom one. Line it up and screw it in. Now you're ready to fully install your motherboard. We'll also reinstall our 
rear fan. Because the motherboard sits higher now, I'm going to move this a little bit higher just because heat rises and we want to be able to pull it out. Now let's put in our motherboard. Now another thing also is you will notice that these two stands are a little bit different. They have a little bit protruding, meaning that if you were to install this with the case standing up, part that's protruding here will catch onto the motherboard. It really helps with ensuring your motherboard stays in place as you're about to mount it. Right, with our motherboard in, let's put in all nine of our motherboard screws. With all the motherboard in, I'm going to show you guys briefly how I went about routing all the cables. When it comes to cable management, it really isn't rocket science, and I always say this. It's all about doing it, and the more times you do it, the better you'll get at it, and the better routes you'll find. These white cables here are from the front fan. The white cables down here are from the two fans above the power supply. Then you have all these cables here, which are the front panel cables. HD audio, it comes down and then routes here, goes in the hole through here, and then comes out to the HD header right here. And as for your front panel power switch, reset switch, that routes down and then simply tucks into here. They have designed the front panel cable on this a little bit different. As you can see here, this says F panel. Now. This means that what they have done here is simply put the power switch and the reset switch in a 9 pin connector like a USB. And that works because when you look at the pins at the front of the motherboard, you will see that it lines up just like this with 4 pins on top and 5 pins on the bottom. As long as you're plugging this in right, you can plug this in as a whole and it will work just fine. On the left is where your front panel cables are going to go, such as your power LED, HD LED, power switch and reset switch. On the right there, that's where you also have an extra power LED port, meaning that you can connect some sort of LED that runs off a positive and a negative. And then the top there would be for your speaker, that's why it says speaker chassis. If you were to line it up on this side, you know there's a pin missing up the top. And notice how there's a pin missing up the top here on the left. If you plug it in this way and plug it straight in, and that takes care of our front panel cables in one go. You see the white cable here? That is a 30 centimeter extension cable. I simply extended this because who wants this ugly 16 pin to 38 pin on the front of the case? It's not very appealing at all. So I simply extended it so I could plug it in here and that way we keep it hidden and all you see is the nice white cable coming from the graphics card and then tucking into the bottom right here. You do have a 5 volt 3 pin hub as well as a PWM hub right here. It runs off a SATA port. That simply comes down and then I've just curled it back up with some slack and this is where it plugs into my SATA. And then this is the one that plugs into any PWM header for your motherboard. That way you can control all the fans on this hub with the one header. This will simply just tuck into here and it will be hidden behind all this. And you also have your 5 volt 3 pin. Tuck it in here and then I'll plug it into the 5 volt 3 pin on the top right here. As for the AIO we have here, there's three PWM connectors. Then you've also got 5 volt 3 pin that piggybacks off each fan and then plugs into an adapter which then plugs into a 5 volt 3 pin and that's going to be the black one that I show you once I install this but we have a splitter here that goes from 1 to 3 so all your fans can plug into this rather than taking up all different PWM headers on the motherboard that's how easy it is to route all your cables and this case just makes it so much easier because they have so much cable management here that it's just insane how easy they've made this case to build in. So user friendly, the versatility as well. This case is so modular, it's just insane how well they've designed this Lian Li 216 case. I've told you now where everything comes through, so we'll just plug it all in now. Let's we'll flip this around. Here's where our ATX comes through, our 24 pin. And there is a tab here, so you've got to make sure that you match that tab up with the tab on the 24 pin and then just plug it in like so. I do advise to do it this way because if you install your AIO first, you're going to have some trouble plugging in all your cables. So do your AIO after and it's going to make life a lot easier. Next, we've got our USB 
3.0 to 3.2. I say that because sometimes it's just USB 3.0, sometimes it's 3.1, sometimes it's 3.2. It plugs in here. There's also a tab on here. You must line that up with the cutout on here. Be very careful. I can't tell you how many times I've accidentally bent these pins because I did not line it up properly. So make sure you do that. Then you've got your type c here it only plugs in one way make sure you find that up appropriately then plug it in here is that cable i was talking about the 16 pin that comes off the graphics card and that's all you're really going to see you're just going to see this nice thin cable rather than seeing that whole mess of 16 pin to 3 8 pins here is our cpu cable coming through the top here i'm just going to push that through here we'll just plug that in right here here we go and now this comes off the hub at the back we're going to plug that into cpu option because i'm going to plug the pump that comes right off the aio directly to the cpu fan number one header here we have our 5 volt 3 pin so we line that up and we plug it in now we come to the bottom here and we have our front panel cable plug it in i'm plugging one of these fans on the bottom here into the fan header right here going to plug it in here just like that this fan will plug in here this fan will plug in there now we have our HD audio right here there is always a pin missing so you line that up accordingly and then just plug it straight in and then we have the 5 volt 3 pin that comes off this fan right here so we plug that into here and here's another fan here that we're just going to plug in right here these three fans are what plugs into here here and here Rather than routing the cable all the way to the hub at the top, I've just simply plugged them into the fan headers that were spare. Just makes it a lot easier and a lot cleaner. With all that plugged in, we're just going to install our AIO and I'll show you guys now how I do that. As you can see here, I've already got the radiator installed and the IO. So let me show you how basically you take this out so you can do that. This whole front top panel is removable. But in order to do that, you have two screws that you need to remove, okay? You're gonna see one here and another one here, right? Remove those two screws and then you're gonna be able to lift and pull out. You don't have to remove these two, even though it looks like you might, you don't have to, just pull it straight out and that whole entire piece will come out now. From here, you can install your radiator. Always test fit how you want your AIO to sit. In my particular case, I wanted my cables to come from here, meaning that I needed my cables to be on this side of the mount and the radiator. Then simply install your fans, whichever way you want it to be. If you want intake or exhaust, it's always best to put it as exhaust so that it takes the hot air out of your case and blows it straight out and heat rises so that makes a more sense and once you install your fans and your radiator you want to route your cables in these fans will be daisy chained we have the fan on the far right which is this one here grab your two cables and push them through the closest opening port which is here the next two cables push it on through here and guide this through as well just like that and do the same to the last one as well guide it on through just pull it on through just pull your cables all the way through and then you can reinstall your radiator but ensure you have all your cables plugged in first before you install this radiator because it's going to make life so much harder to plug 80 cables up the top here if you already have this installed i'm going to install the cable that comes off my pump because i want to plug this into the cpu header so i'm going to come through here up the top and come through this port here guide it on through all i'm going to do is sit this in while i install the pump first all right so now i'm just going to install my pump i want the logo the right way up so this is the way that i'm going to have it as you can see here i've just spread some thermal paste and i've already removed the sticker here a lot of people tend to get to remove this sticker and it's just catastrophic later you get some burning smell sometimes be very careful about that just make sure you remove that plastic sticker install our pump just like that let's put in um, a screw at the top here so it holds it in a thumb screw one directly across from it I like to also install this in a cross pattern that way it kind of pulls it in nice and tight nice and close just nice and snug once this screw stops don't go anymore lastly top right hand corner now we can route this cable in and plug it into the fan header that's basically just above here pull this cable through here's the cable now so it just makes it a lot easier now for me to plug it in you'll see that there is a CPU fan header right here. I'm going to plug that in. Now I'm able to install this top panel with my AIO radiator. 
because everything that I needed to plug in the top is now plugged in. And notice how you don't see any of the cables. That's just awesome. Got the cables routed. We will fix the slack in just a second. Pull this out. You see there's four tabs, yeah? One, two, three, four. You can see four holes here. One, two, three, four. You need to line this up and slide it straight in. That locks it in and holds it in place. Now we will install the two screws that secure the top panel back in. Push it in, line it up with the hole and just screw it back in. That radio is now installed. I want to show you guys how I went about routing the cable. It's always an issue when you have to route a cable off a pump because there really isn't a good route to route it. So what I did here was I just tucked it in behind here and I just guided it through. It just goes up and then through there and then through the hole at the top. For the power supply, I did decide to go with the MSI MPG A1000G. It is a 1000 watt 80 plus gold power supply, so very efficient. And I wanted a thousand watts because after all, we are running a 4080 and this just gives you that little bit of headroom in case you want to overclock. Here, I've already plugged in all the cables. Really, it's not rocket science how you plug them in because everything is labeled for you, as you can see here. CPU PCIe meaning you can plug in either CPU or PCI in these eight pins and it will still work Motherboards that's your 24 pin it comes as one cable match up the pins line it up and plug it in Then you have your peripherals which is your SATA and your Molex GPU cables which is also PCIe and they simply just plug in here now We're not using any types of Molex so we're just going to plug in two SATA cables plenty of SATA ports if you want to install any hard drives and we need SATA connectors for our hub. We're only going to use one CPU cable. Here we have a total of three eight pins. If your GPU has three eight pin connectors, then you wanna make sure you're using three separate. Don't piggyback any whatsoever. Then you have your single CPU cable right here, which is two four pins. It's very simple. This power supply looks gorgeous. I mean, look at this, the black and silver with the little bit of crystal shine. That looks so good, guys. You have your zero fan option and on off button. When it comes to installing your power supply, if you do have a vent at the bottom, then you want to be facing your fan at the bottom. So that way all the hot air from the power supply, it doesn't introduce it to the case and blow it up towards any other components. It simply just pulls it out of the case and exhausts it underneath. So face your fan straight down and then simply slide it on in. So when you look inside, you see these two rubber stands that you see right there and one there and one down there. That's what your power supply is going to sit on. So when you're inserting your power supply, make sure you lift it high enough so that it goes over the top of them. Your power supply will sit on that. So that's important. This is a bit of a tight fit because just this cable's in the way. But once I pass that cable, it slides in quite nicely. Then we put our hand in through the back and we guide it and spin it around. Bring your cables forward so it's not getting caught on anything. Rotate it until it sits inside nicely, just like that. Stand the case back up, it's going to be a lot easier or you can simply install it like this as well. You just have to hold it in place as you put in the screws to mount it. Just bring it forward and you push it up against the panel at the back here. Make sure that you are flush. You have four holes. Right, you need to line them up. We grab our four screws, which we use to mount the power supply. Make sure they're all the same. There we are. Then you line up the four holes that you're going to use to mount the power supply. Install one at a time, go in a cross X pattern. Now you do that because using a cross pattern is going to ensure that it is as close to the panel as possible, which is what you want. So tighten in a cross pattern like this, power supply installed. With all that done, we can now get ready for our Zotac Gaming Trinity RTX 4080 16 gigabyte graphics card. This thing is going to be an absolute dream for 1440p and even 4K gaming. Open this up and now check this out, guys. There's our GPU cable. This is our Zotac Trinity RTX 4080. Look at this thing, guys. It is absolutely insane. Looks like a spaceship. Looks so cool. 
Wow. That looks so nice, guys. Okay, we'll take out all these um, graphics card plugs. These 40 series cards are absolutely huge. We pull off our PCIe x 16 slot protector, line it up, make sure everything is lined up. That's it. You hear that click? That ensures that your tab here has clicked the graphics card into place. Now for test run, we're just going to install one screw first. Without a GPU holder, it actually sits quite straight. But even if it doesn't, they have given you this little magnetic GPU holder. It has a magnetic base and rubber stands. You undo this and then you adjust it accordingly. Put it underneath, wherever it sits, like so. Lift it and then screw it in. It will help support your graphics card. This is the biggest problem that I have with the 40 series cards. They have this ugly 16 pin to 3 8 pin. This is hideous. I mean, having this hang out just looks so bad. So, what I like to do is use an aftermarket one like this. This is the Easy DIY Fab white 16 pin cable. And this is it right here. I mean, just look at this cable, guys. How much nicer is that going to look plugged in? All you're going to see now is this gorgeous white sleeved cable, which already come with combs. Then this simply plugs into here, as well as your tab on this side. Click it in, plug this into your GPU, and you route this where it needs to go. It's plugged in. This is the end of it. We plug this back in. It's one, two. Perfect. Look at that. And that's how our cable is going to be routed. All right, and then we can fold these in as well. Keep it nice and neat. Just let's have a look at it from the other side now. So that's all you're going to see on this side. Pretty happy with that. Let's give it a quick test run and make sure everything works. All right, so now that I've quickly tested everything to make sure that everything is working the way that I want it to, now we can finish the install. It's always a good idea to test everything, make sure that all your fans are spinning, all your RGBs are lit the way that you want it to be, that they're in sync, nothing's unplugged, and even your graphics card fans spin. Always check these things. Right, let's continue with the build. I want to show you how you install the back exhaust fan. This is a cool little addition that they've added to the Lian Li case. You have your exhaust fan here, right? And this is a 140, but you can also install another 120 here. So this basically helps with just exhausting some more hot air away from the graphics card and from inside the case. I have to admit, it is a very cool little addition. No other cases was doing anything like this. This is the piece here that you get in your accessory box. And all I've done here is I've installed the fan. Now, what you wanna do is also you see this little hole here? That's where your cable is going to run through. So make sure your cable comes out here so it doesn't show much cable at all. Install your fan using four fan screws. You're going to line them up with these four holes here. So obviously you don't use the one in the center. Install it like so. And these are the screws that you use, the thumb screws that they give you. That way it's easily accessible and it's easy to take on and off, which is what you want. Just like that. With your cable, plug them in one at a time in the bottom hole that I showed you earlier. Push it on through and then guide it through. Pull it out and guide it through. You see how it barely shows now? All you see is that little bit there. And plus this is at the back so you don't really have to worry about it showing at all. Also, you need to remove this top slot for the GPU. This now has to remove and go to the lowest part. And then we'll just move it down to the bottom now. Now you're going to see firsthand how when I install the 4080, it is not going to obstruct the display port. Don't mind this, I'm just leaving it on because this is a build for somebody and I want them to experience removing all the protective stickers because that's what it's all about when you invest in such a expensive PC. Put in one screw first just to show you guys so it doesn't move around. Plug in our GPU cable. Right, so now look at this. Before, the port was down here. There was no way you were getting it in. But now, you can use all the ports without any obstruction whatsoever. 
How good is that? I'm gonna add two more fans down the bottom. Now remember, these panels can also be used for SSDs, vertical mount, all that good stuff. It's up to you what you decide to do. In my case, I'm just going to install two more fans because I want more cooling. After all, it is a 4080. So we're gonna remove both these panels. All right, and as soon as you remove this, you can see straight away that there are four screws here. You can either put two 140s or two 120s. I'm going to use two 120s. I'm going to use it as an intake. That's one in, and this is where you use your longer screws. Four for each. Get these screws in. Never just go for gold hoping that the screw goes in. Always line it up first. If you get these two in, then you know the other two are just going to fit directly. There we go. You will need to remove the graphics card to install these two fans. Notice how I've also directed the cables to the back. Fans installed. Right, now for the final test when we have everything installed. As you can see here, I had to change the fans because the other ones weren't lighting up as nice and this matches with the beige up here so i'm loving that voila now that is what the pc looks like completely done not too bad at all really really nice very very happy with the way this build came out now you can see here that the color of the rear exhaust fan matches the two front ones so i'm loving the way that works and these here are just run off the RGBs headers and then we have the RAM and this and all this running off the same hub What I'm going to do is just finish off the cable management and we'll put all this back together Okay, just tuck this in behind here I'll Tighten that down Do the same to this so it's just not dangling under here Okay. We'll put the uh, side panels back on. See the we have three tabs here at the bottom. One, two, and three. We slide that in first like that, and then we have these guides here. There's three of them. One, two, three. They have to sit inside here, like so, and then you push it forward. Once you push that forward, you've got a screw that goes in the back. Your side panel has all these little tabs here, round tabs, that need to click in place. You've got these holes here that will line up with these here. There's one there and one there. Slide them in first, make sure they sit in, and then just simply push it on so it clicks in. All the way around. Your tempered glass panel, same deal. You've got three slots here, and you've got three slots here as well. One, two, three. Slide that in and just push it straight in. You got a thumb screw here, simply screw that in. That will hold your temper glass in place. Lastly, you just have the top piece. Okay, your thumb screws are at the back here. Line it up, push it in. There you have it. That is the entire build complete. Looking so cool. This thing looks so nice. Leanne Lee never ceased to amaze me with how simple and user-friendly their cases are and just how well their cases are made in terms of making sure you're able to easily install everything with a lot of room and also airflow. Airflow is also key when it comes to getting a good case. Props to Leanne Lee. This Lancool case 216 is definitely a contender in fast becoming one of my favorite cases.